So, if you want to know what human garbage looks like, meet Jeff Buckles. Yes, that's his real name. Assistant Chief of Police in Geraldine, Alabama, and living proof that steroids damage your brain cells, this chunk of stupid has been posting from a right-wing perspective for years, and showing that your local police department cares more about politics than rights. Why am I saying that? Well, because when Nancy Pelosi ripped up her copy of the State of the Union address, he threatened to blow her up with a roadside bomb. And because he'll probably get away with it. For a little background, Jeff is from Michigan, the state which just sent a man to prison for illegal pot dispensaries. And he graduated from Walled Lake Western High School in 1982. He started publicly posting on Facebook around 2008 to show off pictures of him in the Dominican Republic that he took in 2007. He was in the Navy, likely in construction battalion NMCB-24, from the image he posted. He got used to invading other people's land during his tenure, since he was stationed in Iraq, a country the U.S. lied to get into. He didn't post much publicly for a few years after that, only stopping by to post pics of he and his Navy wife at a national park, or in the Dominican Republic, or literally just a child for some reason. But let's talk about his Navy stint. He regularly posted pics of him in a t-shirt, celebrating his job in Baharia, a base which was in Iraq, just outside Fallujah. That place was called Dreamland by soldiers, but its name comes from Mushat al-Baharia, meaning naval infantry. It was a conquered resort, which was essentially taken over by the U.S. military. It housed the troops who would later kick off Operation Vigilant Resolve, starting with the killing of 17 protesters and the wounding of 70 more. Shit escalated past that point with regular U.S. bombing and infantry campaigns in the region, causing the tension with locals that would eventually lead to the killing and public burning of four Blackwater contractors. Because of that, the U.S. government circled Fallujah with enough troops to scare most civilians out of the city and proceeded to absolutely demolish it, killing whatever civilians were in their way, and crumbling the infrastructure. For basically the entire month of April 2004, the U.S. turned the city into a perpetual hunting ground, regularly destroying large parts of it and invading people's homes to turn them into bunkers. In May, troops withdrew from Fallujah, and the CIA uh, accidentally armed another rebel group who would turn out to be a terror threat, which would lead to another destructive campaign in Fallujah in November. See my interview with veteran Scott Spaulding for more on Fallujah. So that should give you some background into what this guy deems worth celebrating, and shed light on what happened later. In 2010, he graduated a community college in Nebraska, despite being unable to properly spell the word college. In 2016, he started to open up a bit more, saying, quote, As a member of the United States military, I have training every year on cyber awareness, among many other things. Under no circumstance am I allowed to use my personal email to send any confidential, much less classified or top secret information from my personal email. I wonder if the FBI would give me a pass if I did. I doubt it very seriously. It doesn't surprise me that Hillary will not be charged, but I am disgusted that she is not held to the same standards as the rest of us. She has lied since day one of the investigation about every part of the investigation. Hillary Clinton lies every time she opens her mouth. God help our country if she manages to win the election in November. So, if you take him at his word, he's offended that some people are held to different standards than others. He got mad at welfare recipients because VA benefits seemed harder to get than welfare, despite the whole experience of the U.S. military being a place where you get free housing, food, education, and more. He would go on in October to lament that Fox News was talking shit on Trump as well and cry about the liberal agenda. Well, if the liberal agenda was so strong, it sure failed to keep Trump out of office, which he celebrated not too long later. 
When he wasn't posting right-wing boomer copy pastas, he was posting about his home in Fort Payne, where he had a plot of land set aside for food. In September 2017, he shared his agreement with Tommy Lauren about why football players shouldn't kneel. Knowing what we know about his job, that's unsurprising. Guy wants only praise for what he did. Criticism is unacceptable. And... This wasn't even the peak of his posting volume on Facebook. That would begin when he got his job at the Geraldine Police Department, February 2018. He began to post about how righteous he was, claiming God made him a law enforcement officer, and citing non-existent verses. Just in case you don't know, God isn't very chill with that, and in Revelations it's written, for I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written within this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. So like, at least if he's right about God, he already fucked himself out of the deal. Pretty funny that Bible man over here took the Lord's name in vain. But then again, a lot of troops and cops do that. David Grossman thinks he's an instrument of God, and so does Dominic Izzo. And my vid debunking the war on cops should let you know where that mentality gets you. He also posted a video where the original poster lamented that cops couldn't be cops anymore, and posted several posts about days when kids could meet him. With role models like these, who needs the bad crowd? He posted a vid in October of 2018 where a bunch of trained dogs watching Trump on TV sat down on command, likely hoping the common person would just obey Trump themselves. He posted about getting cancer removed from his nose, more Dominican Republic vacation pics, and normal self-congratulatory stuff. Then, in a stroke of irony, he admitted that the military was a free college program by sharing someone's image saying that. Of course, since it was made by someone else, the word college was spelled correctly. He posted many times about his wife's new fitness classes, and posted his pets, boomer Facebook games, and the like. Mostly boring stuff, with the exception of more skin cancer removed from his scalp last September. Which brings me to this year. January 2nd, he called for the death of all left-wing Democrats. January 14th, he promoted a Trump rally and Trump 2020. January 15th, he bitterly seethed about Pelosi signing the Articles of Impeachment. January 17th, he compared himself to The Rock. The trumpeting continued like clockwork, with no substance spoken and Democrats always the villains. February 4th, he sucks off Trump's so too and says Pelosi is chewing her toenails off. Simultaneously, to all this, he set up a Twitter where he posted about the same pro-Trump drivel as he did on Facebook. His bio was, I'm 100% conservative. I think Trump is the best president since Reagan. He then endorsed Rush Limbaugh, said Trump was sent by God, and finally said Nancy Pelosi deserves to be assassinated with a roadside bomb on Facebook. Quote, Pelosi just ripped up his speech roadside bomb on her way home and any other Democrats. Seriously. And to make matters worse, he's not suspended from his position and is enjoying time off he already planned to take out of jail, despite making terrorist threats to an allegedly elected official and calling for the deaths of all political opponents. An investigation is happening, but likely to no avail, because a civilian in his position would already be jailed, and because the system clearly favors him enough that a month after calling for the death of all leftists, he's still allowed on Facebook. Now, as anyone who subs to me on YouTube knows, I have no problem with this kind of post, as long as a civilian is making it. But this pig could get anyone else arrested for saying something like it. Nancy Pelosi and all other politicians are aggressors, and self-defense from aggression is something most people can vibe with. But when it comes to people in power, suddenly there's something wrong with that? Nah, I don't buy it. Still, anyone else would be behind bars. And he's not only not behind bars, but he's still allowed to put people there. 
because of the thin blue line, because the state is a force monopoly and it's okay when we do it, could be their motto. Because the calls for the violent purge of the left are protected, as they have been for many decades by fascists and fascist adjacent people, people saying they and their political fathers are sent by God to do his work and who seek positions of power in order to force society into lockstep, screaming, Deus Volt! is nothing new. And the best part is that he left an insincere, bullshit, fake apology on his page. Quote, I want to apologize for venting on Facebook. I have definitely offended some people with my remarks. It just rips my heart out that our great country is so divided. Yeah, I'm really sure that people are just offended and not threatened. Yeah, totally. Gonna speak directly to him for a second. You fucking liar. You're not angry that the country is divided. You're angry that they're not united behind your leader. You're frustrated that you can't force them all to switch to your side at pain of death. You got used to enforcing U.S. policies overseas, took the war home with you, and treat fellow citizens who don't think like you as enemy combatants. You're one beat away from goose-stepping, and that's why you apologized for venting and offending rather than apologizing for breaking the law you enforce. And I'd tell you this personally, but you shut off comments. So right here, I'll go on the record as saying shut the fuck up, you hypocritical, fashy, bootlicking boomer. I mean, if it were just Pelosi you threatened with death, I'd have less issue with it as an anarchist. But you threatened all leftists, even the ones not in power, your neighbors, in the town you now pose an active risk to. Fuck off. Ideally into retirement. You know they'll give you a pension anyway, even though you'd be locked up if you weren't blue. Now, back to the vid. When I went to leave a review on the Facebook page because I thought people should know their police department was run by people friendly to fascism, I found their reviews closed, but not until a significant number of people had voiced criticism. It's safe to say they'd have one or less stars had they left reviews open, and the reason they're shut down is clear. The negative reviews are right. Emily A. Bell had this to say, and it was the only review left that was speaking the truth. Quote, I don't feel safe in this town with an assistant police chief who spews hate toward people who don't share his political views. The police department officers are public servants who are to protect and serve everyone. Old Jeff has a timeline full of offensive statements and memes and posts a non-apology apology for venting and can't understand why we're so divided as a country. How many other police officers in Geraldine feel the same way? And apparently, the police department has been busy actively deleting reviews, and many are reporting that he sanitized his page of a lot of the more egregious posts himself. So, there are likely a host more I couldn't find, and likely a host more posts I couldn't find of his saying some pretty terrible things. But here's my point. Power corrupts. He'd not be a threat if he didn't have power, and he was attracted to the power so he could be accepted while posing the threat. When he was overseas, he got used to forcing U.S. will on people. He was attracted to the military because he could be thanked for doing so, regardless of what that will was. Until this incident, people couldn't stop sucking him off. Thank you for your service, from a people blissfully unaware of what he did. God bless our boys in blue from people who have no idea the brain behind the badge. Keep America great. Where we go one, we go all. From people who will mouth polish any boot attached to a red hat. This is idolatry, not Christianity. It's living by the sword, and as David Grossman put it, coming back to a, quote, cleansing ritual, where they're accepted back into society and considered just. The problem this time, though, he wasn't killing people over there. He was threatening to kill them here. And since America has long since embedded itself with either xenophobia, jingoism, or both, he got next to no criticism until the fight came home and until it was our civilians at risk. Now that we put names, personalities, and more to the potential numbers, we see the problem. So here's my challenge. Recognize every individual as an individual. 
Stop looking at them as statistics. When you think of the horror you would feel if a friend or loved one died, think of that horror multiplied and compounded by however many are killed in a given action by your government. Then ask yourself, are you okay with turning off your morality long enough to be on board with this? Are you okay with pulling the trigger yourself? Are you okay with becoming Jeff Buckles? If not, consider that whenever you participate in the political process, you might be closer to buckling than you thought. <laughs> <laughs>